America's new stealth bomber, the B-21 Raider, has officially begun ground testing. This news broke literally just a few hours ago and was confirmed by my friends over at the War Zone via a U.S. Air Force spokesperson. Now, ground testing, or taxi testing, is just what it sounds like. It's the B-21 driving up and down the runway under its own power, allowing air crews and engineers to make sure that its throttle and braking systems are all working right. Not to mention little things like the taxiing equipment used to pull it into and out of hangars. All of this stuff are vital first steps towards the B-21's first test flight, which the Air Force still expects to happen before the end of this year, which means in just the next few months. Now, the B-21 has already been touted by Air Force officials as the stealthiest aircraft ever to fly, and it's expected to enter service in just a few years. But if you ask me, the most incredible part of this program has to be the fact that it has stayed pretty much on time and on budget since it broke cover back in 2015. Now, that is practically unheard of in the world of stealth aviation. In fact, let's use the B-21's own predecessor, the B-2 Spirit, as an example. The B-2's unit price was reported as $450 million in 1988. By 1989, that had jumped to $515 million, and by the time the aircraft actually went into production, its order had been slashed from 132 airframes to just 21, thanks in no small part to the collapse of the Soviet Union, and that ballooned the per-unit cost of the B-2 up to an estimated $2 billion apiece. Now, the B-21 has seen price increases since breaking cover in 2015. But I went through and looked at the numbers, and to be honest, the price increases have not kept pace with inflation, meaning today the B-21 is expected to cost less per airframe than it was anticipated back in 2010 when budgeting was first established. And I'll dive into those numbers. The B-21 program wasn't really announced to the public until 2015, but the Air Force was already planning for it budget-wise back in 2010 when they projected it would cost $550 million per airframe. Now, that number was adjusted in 2019 to $632 million per airframe and adjusted once again last December to now about $690 million per per airframe. Now that is a great deal more than that initial $550 million projected cost. However, I went to the U.S. government's Bureau of Labor and Statistics and ran these figures through their inflation calculator, and it turns out these price increases have not kept pace with the inflation rate since 2010. And if they had, the B-21's $550 million price tag would have already ballooned to $780 million dollars. Now, I understand that to normal people like you and me, the difference between 550 and 780 million doesn't really matter. These are insane figures. But when you're trying to field a fleet of 100 of these aircraft, a few hundred million dollars in savings can really add up. Now, the B-21 is expected to enter service by the mid-2020s, which is extremely fast. But Northrop Grumman believes they can get there because they've already conducted a great deal of the testing regime in a simulated environment, allowing them to work out a lot of the wrinkles that you normally wouldn't identify until you already have a prototype flying. In fact, as a result, Northrop is already building six B-21s, and they believe that their design is already close enough to the final product that they won't need significant overhauls before being put right into service. Now, we've heard that before from programs like the F-35, but it is worth noting that the F-35 was developed largely in the 1990s and the early 2000s, and the B-21 is very distinctly a 21st century program. So, that's not to say that it is doomed to follow in the F-35's footsteps, but rather that this may be the first time somebody actually gets it right. And if all goes according to plan, it will be in the air before we ring in the new year.